There are endless possibilities in the world of motion graphics to create breathtaking work. Now add the concept of 3D, After Effects, and of course this tutorial, and one of those possibilities is motion rectangles. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Jordan Bertone with Sonduck Film. And today we'll be breaking down how to make these crazy motion rectangles to add some life to your After Effects workflow. Watch carefully because it's easy to get tangled up in these rectangles. Be sure to smash that like button. And with that being said, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is build our 3D rectangle we'll be using to fill out the composition. First, we'll make the bottom of the rectangle by going to Layer, New, Solid, Set the width and height to 250 pixels, then click OK. Rename this solid to bottom so we can keep track of which part it is, then highlight the solid, go to effect, generate, fill, and we're going to set the color to a nice dark blue. Now enable the layer as a 3D layer, press R for rotation, set the X rotation to 90 degrees, then go to layer, new, solid, for this one, we'll keep the width at 250, but set the height to 1000, then click OK. Rename this layer to Side 1, enable it as a 3D layer, highlight it, then go to Effect, Generate, Gradient Ramp. For the gradient, we'll set the first color to a dark orange, and the second color to an even darker blue, and set the ramp shape to Radial Ramp. For the start of the ramp, we'll set it to be just a little bit off the center of our rectangle and set the end of ramp to be down at the bottom left of it. And now you should have this nice glowing gradient effect. Now that we have the two main pieces of our rectangle done, we can start using them to build the full 3D model. So basically what we're going to do here is reposition our pieces in a 3D space to build out a full rectangle. Start by changing the active camera view to left then highlight side 1, press P for position, and then set the Z position to negative 125, and you can see it's right at the end of our bottom layer now. If you use a different size for your rectangle, just change your Z value until it lines up like this. Now highlight the bottom layer, open position, then set its Y value to 1040. Now you can see if I rotate the camera a bit, we have the start of our rectangle going. Next, duplicate the bottom layer, rename it to top, then simply set the value of its Y position to 40 to put it at the top of the shape. For the other side, duplicate side 1, and set the duplicate's Z position to 125. For our last two sides, set the camera to front, duplicate side 2, set its Y rotation to 90 degrees, set its Z position back to 0, Set its X position to 835, duplicate that side, and set its X position to 1085. Highlight all the layers, right click, select Precompose, we'll name it Rectangle, then click OK. Enable the Precomp as a 3D layer, and then enable Continuously Rasterize. Now we have this nice, fully 3D rectangle object to work with. Next, we're going to add some expressions to animate our rectangle and fill out our composition with them. For our first expression, press P for position, hold down the ALT key, and click the stopwatch. Then, in the expression controls panel, I'm going to paste in this wiggle expression. You can find this expression available in the description of the video. Then, I'm going to open the rotation, ALT click the stopwatch for X rotation, and type in time asterisk 10 in the expression controls box. Now that it's animated, we can start adjusting its scale and position in 3D space to fill out our composition. We'll open the rotation, adjust the Y and Z rotation until we have it at a nice looking angle, then we can press S for scale, uncheck uniform scaling, stretch it out to make it longer, and then squeeze it in to make it thinner. Then we can take its position, move it off to the side, and adjust its Z position to move it a bit closer to the screen. Now that we have one in position, I'm going to fast forward while I duplicate and reposition more rectangles to fill out the screen a bit. This isn't an exact science, so get creative with how you adjust and position your shapes. Now you should have a nice group of rectangles floating around and rotating in space like this. If you like the graphic featured in this video, be sure to check out our brand new Editor's Motion Pack. It features over 300 motion elements to help enhance your editing projects and make them stand out. With our easy-to-use extension, all you need to do is find a graphic you like and click Apply. 
Once it's out on the timeline, you can use our simple control layers to customize the graphic to fit your needs. And just like that, you have an awesome custom composition to use in your projects. Check out the link in the description below or visit sonduckfilm.com for more details. Lastly, we're going to finish off our composition by layering our shapes, adding a background, and a few post-processing effects. Start off by going to Layer, New, Null Object, enable the Null as a 3D layer, and parent all of your rectangles to it. Then open its rotation, set a keyframe for X rotation, bring its angle down a bit, move to the end of the timeline, and increase the rotation by about 10 or 20 degrees. This will add a small, constant rotation to all of our rectangles. Next, go to Layer, New, Camera, set the zoom to around 2700, and click OK. Open the camera, transform, move the point of interest so that the rectangles are somewhat centered, then decrease the Z value of its position to make it fit the screen a bit better. Open camera options, enable depth of field, Set the aperture to 425, then adjust the focus distance until you see some of the rectangles in the back starting to get a bit blurry. Now highlight all of the layers, pre-compose them, we'll name this to Shapes 1, and click OK. For our background layer, go to Layer, New, Solid, set the height and width to 1920 by 1080 or whatever size your comp is, and for the color, we're going to set it to be the same dark blue we used in our gradient ramp, then click OK. Now highlight the pre-comp, go to Effect, Stylize, Glow, set the Glow Radius to 815, then Alt-click the stopwatch for Glow Radius and type in Wiggle, parentheses, 0.5, comma, 400. Next, go into the Project panel and duplicate our Shapes pre-comp, drag it onto the timeline, and then open it up. Delete the camera layer, then go through and delete some of the rectangles until you have about three or four left. Then back out into your main composition, highlight the second shape pre-comp, open the scale, uncheck uniform scaling, and change the height to be negative 100 so that it flips upside down. This is an easy way to reposition all of the rectangles at once. Now in the effect controls panel, increase the glow threshold to about 25%. Our rectangles are done, so now what we're going to do is add a title layer to the composition and put it between our two rectangle pre-comps on the layer list, so now we have this nice background and foreground effect over our title. And now your motion rectangle composition is complete. And there you have it, a brand new technique to help you enhance your projects in After Effects. Also be sure to check out our free After Effects templates, links for those will be available in the description below. Thank you as always for watching, and remember, always be creating.